Hi everyone, welcome to QNAP Live broadcast. I'm Sam, your host for today's topic. And we are extremely uh, interesting because, uh, sorry, not interesting, exciting because uh, we are prepared to launch the new QTS version, which is 4.3.5. And today we have our PN Sam. Uh, he will tell you uh, the new user interface and the new function uh, for some of the applications in our QTS. So uh, let's take a look at, for the slide first and we'll get into the topic directly. The topic today is enhanced network management. So there will be two of the applications. The first one will be the network and virtual switch. And the second one will be the QVPN 2.0, which I think you might have already uh, checked on this topic for uh, several times. But since it's QTS new version, we will still mention some part of the uh, features and the benefit of using the QVPN 2.0. So let's get into the new QTS 4.3.5, the network and the virtual switch. Well, basically, uh, now we are all using the high-speed 10 gig uh, for the internet transaction, no matter it's for your computer or your Mac or uh, your switch or your NAS. So um, why we want to uh, emphasize on the 10G era right now, because actually you will find that more and more new hardware devices are having the 10G uh, RJ45 port. So now we have a new function that uh, our VM and our container, even your virtual QTS uh, can use the 10G uh, transmission speed and then by the 10G is related to the uh, network. And uh, maybe the things we are having the VM, so the virtual switch will also be one of uh, its, its part. So we also have a new UI design for the network and uh, virtual switch, the, 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 the tab in our QTS. And then uh, we will also show you the benefit and the features of using our wireless internet adapter, which is the QWAAC2600. And this will be the main topic for the 4.3.5 today. And let's check on the network highlights. Uh, please tell us about it. Yeah. For the uh, streamlined function for consumers, uh, we can enhance the uh, network interface. Can now can display the custom customized name, and also we can support customized DDNS and the multiple daemon service. For IPv6, we support stateful and stateless auto configuration, and also you can. Um, Launch the IDVD service on each network interface. Also, we support the uh, reserve IP for IPv4 DHCP service, auto default gateway, and NCSI uh, connectivity checking, and we support the static law. Yeah, so this will be the new things of the, the type of network and virtual switch. So, are you now using uh, the 10G or are you ready for it? Because now you can see that uh, from the virtual switch and the real NAS and even the switch, and we can support like Windows and the Mac, even the new iMac Pro, which we all love that. And they all prepare for the 10G already. Yeah, you can buy the 10G Nick from Amazon or mm -hmm. eBay. And the price now in 2008 is less than $100. Mm -hmm. So it's easy to, to deploy the 10 network for you. Yes. And what is our solution for the 10 What we have, like we can support the VM, like we said, VM container and the virtual QTS and with our uh, 10G switch. So we provide you a more a complete structure of your internet uh, environment. So let's take a look at uh, the new things to our network and virtual switch tab. So here is the previous problem and questions that we all might have. Uh, see, uh, maybe if you are MIS or you are an IT guy, when you want to, you know, like check for any uh, disconnection for your RJ45 internet port, and you have to look from all of the like the 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 the, the disaster of the cables, and you have to find that this here this connector and we touch the, the connector we touch the cable and like we drag we drag we drag okay and then we find the other connector which is a disaster and a cost of time so here is the first thing 
first change, which will obviously change uh, your hard work. Like we now have a more easy, easier way for you to see uh, what is the connector really at. And so you just click on each of the, the like the tab, like you click on each of the adapter. Yeah. And then it will show you by the lightning of the uh, the green lamp. Yeah, so it will blinking. Yeah, and then you just you just check on the blinking part and you will see where the port is at. And then we have another uh, new thing that we can also give you a new and a clear uh, network structure for your virtual and your physical network from your left hand side to the right hand side. So the left hand side is pretty much as inside. Yeah. And then the more to the right hand side, the more the internet will go to the outside. Yeah. yeah. And then you can also uh, see the clear detail by the, you know, you can see the, the blue line, which from uh, like the five of the the, 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 the different, plane, container. different container and then go to the middle one is the container network and then go to the go to the right hand side so uh, you can even use it for DHCP or uh, the net right yeah mm -hmm. so now it's getting more convenient and uh, Sim will also uh, do the demonstration for you and you will see the whole picture of new user interface and here is the common problems that we we, we have we, we searched from the forums and basically a lot of people are asking this like if i'm having a virtual virtual machine and how can i uh, use other uh, computer or how can i how can other users just access the virtual machine within the same local network right and here is our solution like very easy just six steps from your PVS, we'll bridge the VM and we go to the router of the current physical network and we can do the segment and it will assign the IP address to your VM. Then we can configure the, the, the virtual NIC and then we bridge to another adapter. And when it's done, all device on the same segment could access this VM. Yes. So it's not that hard uh, for the new QTS version. And we will just give you the demonstration. Yep, Start sure. Yeah, let's get into the computer. So here the, you can see the uh, our new network and virtual switch here. Mm -hmm. uh, it have a, a technical drawing, machine drawing, and tell you uh, which which adapter is your system default gateway and your web IP. And the le left side I will show the, uh, what's the virtual service uh, like a virtual machine or the container running on your NAS and the center part is uh, um, your virtual switch and the right side and you can see the, your adapter and uh, which connect to which part and here have a, a simple can show you is connected to the internet and you can see here is a smart offload that tell you uh, your device is supposed some smart offload function like SIOV, ICER, Rocky RDMA, uh, something like that. Okay, so when you launch a uh, virtual switch here, uh, remember when you first uh, launch a virtual machine, remember to install a, a driver from mm -hmm. our uh, guest CD it help you to upgrade uh, your network driver and the storage drivers. Mm -hmm. And remember to change from uh, like Intel Giga Ethernet or Realtek Fast Ethernet to the virtual I.O. Mm -hmm. Then you will upgrade from 10, uh, 1 Giga Ethernet to 10 Giga. And here you can use the uh, uh, virtualization station, uh, the setting mm -hmm. tab, and you can change the, which uh, virtual switch you, you want to combine with, or you can go to a network and virtual switch, click the virtual switch button, then you can edit the current existing uh, virtual switch or add a new one. 
So it's just very simple. You select uh, the external network you want to bridge with and select the uh, virtual NIC, which you want uh, and click next and just select the DHCP client next. And oh, also you can just use the basic mode then mm -hmm. it quickly bridge uh, your virtual NIC with the external network. Okay. And after light, you can see our uh, overview for college. Uh, you can see our Win10 mm -hmm. is uh, bridged to the adapter 3 via the virtual switch 5 mm -hmm. and the connect to this this segment 192.168.100. So uh, you, your virtual switch will get the IP address from these segments routers. So let's go to the wind tail. Okay, you can see your uh, NIC speed, now it's upgraded mm -hmm. to 10G. And you get the IP address from the same segment router. Mm -hmm. So if you want to access this virtual machine by, uh, through the internet, uh, you just set the call forwarding on your router, mm -hmm. and you can mm -hmm. just uh, type the uh, WAN IP uh, plus the call number, then you can directly access this virtual machine. Okay. So that'll be the demo? Yeah. Okay, so let's go back to the slides. So here's the first part of the demo. How can I uh, let uh, our device to access, get, in, get access into that VM? And here is the second problem, so which is opposite. And uh, if I have set up a virtual machine, and how can I prevent other local devices from accessing it? Because I want to run the same bug test on that virtual machine. We also have the solution uh, okay, like we just also we get into the modify settings and we uncheck the selection of the physical adapters because in the previous demo, Sam just mentioned that you need to click on the physical adapters and the virtual one so that you can you can let uh, other devices to get in. And then from here, we uncheck the physical adapters, we set the static IP for your virtual switch, then we DHCP enable it and it will assign the IP address for your virtual machine. Then the default gateway should be at a step, uh, at the same as the static IP, right? Yeah. For the virtual switch, then your net can enable the VM and then you can prevent it to be accessed from the other local devices. So let's do it again for our viewers. So we go to the computer. Yeah, uh, here you can see the Win7, okay. You just go to the uh, virtual switch and also uh, select the advanced mode. And now you don't select any physical adapter, only select the virtual adapter uh, which you want to create a closed independent network. Mm -hmm. And now remember to assign a fixed IP address for this virtual switch. One. Okay. Now here, if you want to keep uh, this network isolated and mm -hmm. secure, uh, don't enable the NAT. Mm -hmm. Just enable the DHCP service mm -hmm. to help you assign the IP address to your uh, virtual machine or container. Mm -hmm. But if you want to uh, use it, use a now. NAS help you to relay your uh, network packet. You can uh, enable an AT service and then remember the default gateway should be same as this virtual switch is IP address. Okay. 
And after that, apply it, uh, you can see, you can create uh, the uh, virtual machine connect to this virtual switch and only this independent closed mm -hmm. network. Mm -hmm. So no no connect to uh, the physical any adapter. Adapter and uh, not <coughs> enable the NAT service. So, so the, let's check the uh, uh, Win7. You can see uh, it cannot connect to the internet. So that is how we prevent other devices to access it. Yes. Okay. So let's go back to the slides. <laughs> and we have them on the two of the common problems we gathered on the internet. Then we will also show you like the overview that you can quickly check the, the, the internet overall status by if you can see a small like the, the, the earth icon of the, the earth, yes. yeah, which means that that environment can access to the internet. But if you do not see the icon of the earth, which means that that is on the independent network. Yes. So uh, the, the, our, our NAS will automatic, automatically detect if that port can go to the internet or not yes. and show you the icon. That, that's itself. the NCSI service later we will discuss. Yeah. So we go into the next topic. How can the new version of the QTS bring you, uh, bring your NAS the easier uh, equipment for you to use? Like first thing that uh, you just download our Q tier, uh, sorry, the Q Finder Pro uh, from our website. Yeah. And uh, you can, like, if your computer and your NAS is under the same environment, internet environment, and you can search it by using our Q Finder. And you can also uh, uh, easily to you know, access into that, uh, the, the NAS, so that you can use, also you can use our computer control panel and go to the network and virtual switch. So you can just start to configure your own like internet environment and how you want to deploy your virtual switch, your open internet or closed independent internet, like very easy for users to use. So that is what we want to bring to our uh, like home users, maybe I can say that. But if you are an enterprise user, we will show you the other features later. And here you can also choose the multiple DDNS. Uh, previously, we can support the MyQNet Cloud, right? But for the new QTS version, uh, you can choose your own uh, your own DDNS, such as the Google domains or or other domain that you prefer to use. But one thing for sure that MyQNet Cloud for now is still free. Yeah. yeah. But if you are using other domain name, maybe they need to charge. And basically, it's all by your choices. And you can also use your customized uh, DDNS. Yeah. I think that is one part of the features. So depends on where you are located and uh, which of the DDNS service is more better to you. Okay. Yeah, so you can choose it by yourself. Also, it's very easy now to access from the internet because you know that our uh, MyQNet Cloud tech as a function called like auto like auto port forwarding or something uh, auto load configuration yeah it will help you if your router has the UPnP function right. it will help you to do the port forward for your each of your different like your protocol like your FTP or your uh, uh, web servers yeah. and VPNs mm -hmm. yeah and can we now do it on the network and virtual switch tab or uh -huh. Also in the uh, behind in, in the control panel behind oh. the network and virtual switch. Okay, so that is a more easier way for users to do every of the internet configuration in this tab, right? Okay. And we are not forgetting the Mac user. So uh, we also provide a more convenient user interface for the Mac user. Now you can just plug your uh, Thunderbolt three connector into some of our QNet NAS, which can support the Thunderbolt 3. Like mm -hmm. we are having a AA2 ST3 right yeah. here, and we have other of the NAS that can support. I think it's like 15. Entry label is uh, 453 BT3. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. base is entry label and easy to use. And uh, for enterprise, we have a uh, 1282 T3 or mm -hmm. a 5082 T3 okay. TU. Uh, it's a right yeah. Okay, so you can also you can still use the Q Finder. We support iOS. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can also use QBinder and uh, search for your Thunderbolt 3 devices, and then you can also mount that. Yeah, it can help you to adjust some uh, configuration on your Mac, like uh, it can help you to disable the uh, same bus signing mm -hmm. or adjust some uh, advantage uh, configuration, like uh, help you to improve improve your uh, Final Cut Pro's uh, speed, something like that. Yeah, and why do we suggest you, to, like not suggest, we can also uh, encourage you to use the Mac because Thunderbolt 3 is very fast, right? We have a new data take UI for a Mac user, as you can see in the right hand side, and at the, uh, sorry, the left hand side. And at the right hand side, you can see that I am blocking your pictures. So, so now you can see that by using the Thunderbolt 3, uh, some Windows PC can have almost like 2000 megabyte, byte, right? Yeah, megabyte per second for the transmission performance. So it's very fast. And uh, so if you are a Mac user, you have Thunderbolt 3. It's your good time to use the fast transmission. Yeah. Yeah. And here is the enhanced advanced features for the new QTS version still in the network and virtual switch, right? Now we can improve IPv6. We can support the stateful and stateless function. And for the so RA DVD that is stateless. Uh, that means uh, uh, it's, a, it's a similar like the, the DHCP service mm -hmm. for IPv4, mm -hmm. but it's for IPv6. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you just mentioned uh, the IPv4, and now we just we just talk about the new function of the IPv4. It's like the the reserved IP or something. Yeah. Yeah. Which means if you are running an enterprise or you are having your 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 in an office and you have several like internet printer and yeah. scanner or something, and if I mean if once you have connected everything together and if your router or your uh, server just you know, like down down for service and when you return the service on you might have to get a different ip address for all your internet devices so the reserved ip addresses function will uh, memorize the previous ip address by maybe it's by the mac address yeah, according to your reduced MAC address, you yeah. assign the same IP address for you. Yes, so you don't have to worry about if the IP will you know, re reassign. Yeah. yeah, it's a very easy function and uh, a good way to maintain your current internet environment. Yeah, and how can we conf uh, configure it? It's also very easy. You just get into the network and virtual switch tab, and then we go to the DHCP, DHCP server. Yeah. And then we click on the microscope, which is on the right hand side, and we just add reserve IP and we go to tab three. You can just type in the device name, IP address, and the MAC address. So everything will be synchronized. Yeah, so that is the way you can get your IP reserve. And we can have the oh, we can support the auto default gateway function and the NCSI. NCSI setting uh, is NCSI is the function that we just mentioned, the little earth icon in your uh, structure. And since it will automatically detect if your port can go to the internet for you. And if you don't want to see the icon because some of the company, they will have the confidential issue. So uh, you can also turn the I, uh, NCSI function off. So you won't be able to see any of the icons on your structure. And what is the auto default gateway? which means like we can support two of the ISP at the same time and at the same QNAP class. If your main ISP is down for like any of the unpredicted issue and the second ISP will automatically get connection for you. It's like a internet connection redundancy feature. I think. Redundant or then failover. Yeah, redundant and failover. So, uh, that is also a good way, but you need to have two of your ISP, yeah. And the static route, that is also another function. Uh, I think it's more better that Sam, you can introduce the static yeah. route. For static route, that means uh, you can add the uh, 
routing rule for for your NAS, then you can control your network package direct uh, direction. So that means uh, when you going home, you want to see the uh, fever fever uh, woke up, mm -hmm. and the, at the meantime, you need to uh, work at the, uh, you need to make a new quotation for your customers. So you can set the static routing rule, mm -hmm. like uh, your company is NAS server, uh, the IP address network segment to the static routing rule. And uh, when you your network packet, when you see the uh, TV broadcasting, uh, every network packet will go through the default gateway, like the blue line on the screen uh, is a uh, uh, goes the uh, 192.168.20 yeah. and will with the internet, access the internet. And when you access your company, uh, you type the uh, 172, your uh, uh, NAS server's IP address, you will pass through the this network package to different port. You will uh, pass through from VPN. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we can do the, the rule by ourselves. Yeah. Right. Okay. Good. So for some specific usage, you can you can you can consider the static route function, and we also have some new uh, applications that can provide you a good user experiment. Like uh, okay, it's for these three applications. The first one is for your one gigabyte. Uh, one gigabit port and the second is for your 10 gigabit port and of course the thunderbolt what is that is our ac2600 our pcie ac wireless adapter well this adapter we have already introduced it before because that is a dual bandwidth and uh, you can support like two of the ssid at the same time and it has an extension uh, antenna which you can see right here the black black thing right here and uh, you can use it to create your uh, private internet environment or you can use it to you know like connect more things because in the previous internet structure like i have one computer i have two uh, devices i will go these three things into the router and then the router go to the nas but now if i use the wireless adapter I can just connect everything directly into the NAS. So no need to give the load into the router and the router can do the other works. Yeah. And since it's wireless, so it's much more easier. You don't have to like connect all of the cables and some com com complicated things. So it's better for a home user because we don't want to do the cabling every time that we have new devices. So here is the wireless setup screen. Also in the network and virtual switch uh, page and of course you can download the like our wireless ap app right yeah yeah but now you can use the network and virtual switch tab and it's in the interfaces uh, column and you can just set your uh, ac2600 for your uh, own purpose yes we are climb on mm -hmm. so uh, uh this is most of the new thing for the uh, new version of qts 4.5 which we only talk about the network and virtual switch tab. In this episode, we have now combined more virtual part and more physical part together. So this is our new improvement and we have some new UI, we have some new features. And when the QTS 4.5 will be launched? Uh, soon, I think next month. In next month, maybe next month, but we will have a uh, uh, cross beta soon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so uh, we will try our best to give you the, the latest version. So if you have seen the up, upgrade uh, notification, don't hesitate, just do it and you will see a new world <laughs> of using on us. So here is the uh, network and the virtual switch part that we are bringing you today. Okay. And next, we're going to the second part, which is also related to the internet, which is the VPN. And I believe that you have already heard about the QVPN 2.0 for like one or two times, but since it's new QTS version, we want to talk about that again, since uh, 
like is coming up with it. And if you have not heard about the QPM, uh, sorry, the QPPN 2.0 before, you can check on this video for now. So what is a VPN? Basically, uh, if you're an IT guy, you are MIS, you definitely know what is VPN, but if you're not like me, so I have some very good explanation for you to understand what that is. Imagine that you are now in the cafeteria or you are in library or something, and you want to connect, you want to make a connection into your office to get some confidential data file for your like your boss, even if even even if you are in a holiday on a weekend. And okay, we hate that, but still we have to do that. So I just use the public Wi-Fi and we get back into the company server and then I go to my computer and get the confidential data and then go back to my computer and I send to my boss. Well, the transaction from the cafeteria to your own computer in your office, that is an open uh, internet environment. So if we have hackers or we have some people that want to get your information or your customer's information, that is very easy for them. So that is why we will bring you the VPN because if we are using the VPN, they will encrypt your uh, data file transmission. So the, 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 the hackers will not be able to know what you are downloading, you are transmitting. So uh, from this side to that side, you, it will all be encrypted. So that is a much more safer way for you to have like some confidential issue. And to be more specific, if you are driving on the highway and you, you know, like you can you are speeding and you just go left and go right. So if, if we take this as an internet like environment, a hacker will be like a helicopter on the top of you and he can see what you are doing and he can see your move. But when you are getting to the tunnel, and since the helicopter cannot get into the tunnel, so he won't be able to know if you are like doing the speeding or your hijacking or sorry, the jaywalking or something. So this is the meaning of using the VPN. And then what kind of people will use the VPN? We have four of the examples, like the business users, which I just mentioned. I'm on a business trip to Thailand and I want to get some contract after my business meeting. And I use the Wi-Fi in the airport. Then here's the problem. And if you have multiple uh, international branches, like one is in USA and the other is maybe in France, French, France, France, and you want to uh, like doing the backup or you want to do the recover. And if you don't use VPN, some, some people might be able to get into your uh, system and get your information. Or if you have some sensitive data like hospitals and bank, and because that is all about the health issue and the money. So it's very important for this kind of customer to use the VPN service. And we have uh, the fourth of the examples, like I'm a Net Netflix user, but I'm specifically in Taiwan. So I can see some of the movies from Net Netflix that is made for Taiwan users. But if I want to see some of the, Net the movies that is made for American user, maybe I cannot do it because my IP address is located in Taiwan and uh, the Netflix server will detect that and give me the movies only Taiwanese can see. So I can use the VPN service to make the, it's not even okay that we can tell them, right? Yeah. We can make the server think that I am now in USA, so it will assign me the USA page so I can see the movies that is made for USA. Yeah. So uh, here are the several uh, benefits of using the VPN. Like I just said that if we are uh, in the library, yeah. but actually for now, the library for each of the elementary school, universe, un university, they, will, they already are using VPN because when we are creating the member account, what do we need? Like ID and address and maybe phone number and of course the name and the picture. So that are all the confidential uh, information for each of the person. So that is why they will use the VPN. So the VPN will make you, uh, will give you a more safer uh, internet environment. So to secure your communication and 
give you a privacy protection and it will reduce your business travel cost because we can go through the VPN and it will give you a safer connection. So of course, you don't have to spend a lot of extra money or cost to, to lower your uh, chance for being hacked. Yeah, and of course, the one of the benefits is that can help you to access to some different part of the, uh, the, the, the planet, country, yeah, sorry, country. And uh, now let's take a look at our app. It's called QVPN. So uh, we will take a look at the user interface and the benefit of using our QVPN. Here is the new structure of the uh, user interface of our QVPN, right? And here you can also see the internet structure from the left hand side to the right hand side and it will show you what kind of uh, devices are connecting to what kind of vpn service and what that vpn service is led to like what what the the, the IP, uh, what the uh, content of your ip is located at or uh, what are the like the p2p the, 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 the different segment you want to forward yeah thank you and uh, we are using the AES-256 encryption, so yeah. it's secure enough. Yeah. And we are now uh, launching the QBelt, which is a new protocol. And since it's new, and it will be having a lower lower chance to be detected okay. yeah, when you're using the VPN service. So uh, it's, it, will, it will be harder to be blocked. Yeah. I can say that, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it's easier for you to work on all your devices, <laughs> yeah. like your computer, your <laughs> Windows, Mac, your uh, mobile phone, Android, iOS, and even NAS to NAS. Yeah. Uh, easy to use. <laughs> and we will show you how to create that steps just right in the uh, video today. And since the, you are using the QVPN, yeah. it will give you help yeah. to set your uh, NAS manually by your default setting, your public DNS yes. or something. So if you use for business, we suggest you to choose the uh, NAS default because it can adopt uh, your environment DNS like uh, your company's uh, private DNS. So you can access some private servers in your net office. Or uh, if we also uh, have provide some suitable public DNS server for you, like uh, uh, the Google DNS, uh, Cloud, Cloudflare is a new DNS server on the market, or IBM Core 9, no terms, or some uh, DNS in China. So you can uh, check the latency and uh, select a suitable DNS server. Yeah. And of course, since you are using our NAS and you are using our QVPN, so what will be the benefit? When you are doing the recovery or you are doing the backup or our RTR function, and you can use the VPN to secure all the internet uh, transmission. So when it's doing the backup thing or doing the, the, the recover thing, it will be definitely safe. And we also can support you to mount your remote folder into uh into your so computer I, yeah five, five yes. station between us to us oh uh, yeah and this is how <laughs> we can show you right you can get into that folder into the file station and click on the specific folder and you will see a remote mount tab on the right up hand side you click that and then you you will see a new tab you which is the create remote mount. And you can just you know, like select the VPN connection IP and choose the uh, target folder. Then you can see uh, apply it and you can see the uh, CIF as same bus uh, is via the VPN connection mount remote mount. Yeah, so this will be the new, uh, this will be the function that can help you have a more you know, like storage space and easier to read and write. So uh, we also gather some uh, issues from our customer, like uh, how, what if what, what I can do when I cannot connect to the, the VPN? Uh, it might be uh, blocked by firewall. So mm -hmm. when, when it's happened, uh, 
you should contact your uh, network administrator, mm -hmm. your company's IT guys to tell tell him your, your network packet will block by firewall. And uh, another scenario is uh, if you have a router and maybe uh, assign IP address to your uh, laptop, your pad, your NAS, uh, but the router doesn't know which device should relay the traffic. Mm -hmm. So that means uh, they don't know which device is your VPN server. So you need to config, configure, <coughs> configure your routers. Mm -hmm. So we can see the next slide. Yeah, so uh, basically we will, uh, we already know that issues and the problems. So that the next thing is how we can help. First of all, uh, we can provide you two manual setup uh, steps. The, the right hand side is more easier, like the DMZ. Once you open the DMZ, it will help you to open all your ports under that uh, IP address. So once you open the DMZ, you can get into that device very easily. But somehow it will also, also give you some secure concern because since all your ports are exposed, hackers can be more easier to get into your devices. Yeah. Yeah. So we will choose the left hand side way, which is the pop forwarding. <clears throat> For pop forwarding, you need to get access into your router and then you can set the specific port for your device. And when you open that, only that port will be open. But if you don't know how to do that or uh, okay, basically different of the router, they are having different uh, like pages for set the pop forwarding. Maybe the name of pop forwarding will be different. So uh, uh, if you can get some help, well, that's better. But if you cannot, well, you can go for the specific router type and then someone will show you. So we also have another more easier way for you. If your uh, router support the UPnP function, uh, we have one tab is called like auto, auto configuration. Yeah, uh, in the MyKinet Cloud app, it will help you to do the auto detection. Like if uh, if your router support this function, it will help you to do all the proper voting. And you can see a list right here, the, the right down side, several of the list, which is for like your FTP, your like web, web server, web your server. VPNs. VPN, yeah. Uh, each of the service has their own port. So uh, you can just click, check all the port that you want to turn on and you just apply and it can help you to do the rest of the thing. Yeah. And uh, uh, okay, we really think that QVPN is a, a good tool that when your IP address is not fixed because we can also support the my QNAP Cloud VDNS. Yeah, right. So uh, when you just assign a name for your own QNAP NAS, it will also create and uh, maybe not create, uh, generate a VDNS for you. So even if, can that help on the DHCP? Uh, no. Yeah, it just uh, created a, a my, my QNAP Cloud domains mm -hmm. and you can just use it to help you to relate to your dynamic IP address. Ah, yeah. So even the router is assigning different of the IP to that QNAP NAS? But oh, no, no. For DHCP, you also, for router, mm -hmm. uh, you, you assign a port forwarding to your NAS, mm -hmm. but the DDNS is help to uh, you get the dynamic web IP uh -huh. address and uh -huh. help you to identify the this uh, domain name to your dynamic IP address. So it's more like the WAN issue. Yes. Okay. So uh, once you set your own uh, device name, you can have the mycunipcloud.com follow your device name. Yeah. yeah. So you can now be more easier to get access into your NAS through the internet. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, we provide several of the new uh, like software and the new applications for you to uh, connect to your NAS via the VPN more easily. Here is the first one for Windows user. We'll just click the start menu and go into settings and the network internet and choose the VPN and add a VPN connection. And then by following all the information you have to key in, you can make the VPN connection. But if you are 
using the L2TP, you need one more step that you need to get the pre-shared key. Yeah. And also we have Mac use, uh, we, we have the new, uh, we have the way for Mac user. Just click on the Apple icon and get into system preferences, go to network and click on the plus, the, the, the plus sign on the left down side and you can create the VPN and you can choose LTTP or IPsec, right? And also click on the, okay, the hardware authentication settings and you can set your password and your, you can share security. Yeah. That means, also means the pre-share key. Pre-share key. So it's called pre-share key in Windows, but shared secret in Mac OS. Yes. Yeah, basically they are the same thing. And if you are using a smartphone, the Android, we also have an easy way for you. Just go into the setting tab and then follow the six steps and then you can make the connection. But if you are using the LTTP, uh, you have to do the pre-share key, right? And of course, we have Mac U. We have ways for Mac user. We also have ways for uh, iOS user. It's the same thing. Go into settings and click the VPN and do the configuration and choose the type LTTP and the pre-share key. Then everything's done. So that is for. Um, uh, the, the ways how you can connect to the VPN. Stand, stand up VPNs. Yes. So we also have several new of the uh, like user interface. Yeah. Right. Here's the interface for Mac users so, and Windows. So uh, it's a, our new utility support for our new proprietary VPN protocol mm -hmm. to build. So we can use uh, uh, our utility to uh, connect to our NAS VPN server via the to build. Mm -hmm. And you can see by the map or by all the other information like who is using it and what is your IP being located at. Relocated. Yeah. yeah, it's very easy. So here's the next thing that we want to, to let your NAS connect to remote NAS through the VPN server. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> uh, it's very easy. Like uh, in the QVPN application and you can choose like QBelt protocol or PPTP yeah, or yeah, L2TP yeah. or OpenVPN yeah. is all by yourself. Yeah. But uh, since we are introducing the QNIC NAS, I will also introduce you and suggest you to use the QBelt yeah. because it's new. Yeah, and it's very easy. You can just go to uh, the VPN client and go to the VPN connection profile, and you can just create everything, right? And the list our new function for mm -hmm. uh, you can set the VPN connection as your NAS default gateway. Mm -hmm. So also, also it's the polar failover function. So you can also uh, you can set the backup VPN connection when the uh, fir first con VPN connection is broken, then you can auto switch to the uh, your backup VPN. Yeah. And of course, we are having the AC2600. That will be also a good way for you to <clears throat> connect your remote devices into your NAS by the wireless adapter. And then you can use the uh, VPN function with our QBelt. So when you are using the hybrid beta sync to you know, uh, back up to the public cloud or to another NAS, use our QBelt will be more safer than the other original VPN that you are considering to use. Mm -hmm. And we have a detail like the login log. So you can track for the, the, the like, from no matter it's the IP address or the, 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 the device and what kind of protocol that the device is using and what is the de destination and what has this IP done, like download or upload how many of the data file. <clears throat> it's all okay. So it's a good way for you to manage your uh, VPN usage. So here's another good way, like uh, how can we, uh, how can we use the NAS to make you cross the content and make the- Because system. maybe uh, you, you want to visit uh, USA or uh, Europe, but you don't have a friend layer or, mm. or you don't have uh, other QNAP NAS layer and you can, uh, we integrate with a uh, third party pro service provider is named Viper VPN. Mm -hmm. So uh, it, it creates 
build a lot of uh, ser VPN server around the world. So you can use our uh, QVPN client to connect to a wider VPN servers. So it can help you to uh, <coughs> visit uh, different countries. Mm -hmm. So try before you can. Yeah. So now we are giving you the demonstration of how can we use the wireless adapter and uh, to work with the Viper VPN, sure. which we just mentioned. So let's go get into the computer. Okay, let's start our VPN. Connection. Uh, here is a server in Taiwan, okay. Now uh, you can see my ne network connection. Let's connect to, okay. Uh, Unplug our Ethernet cable and use the Wi Fi. Okay, you can see now I connected to our AC 2600. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, only one connection, which mm -hmm. is a lot available. Mm -hmm. The VPN client to mm -hmm. connect my uh, Office server. Mm -hmm. Use the QBelt protocol. So the original IP address now is uh, one. Uh, is this IP address two one eight, and uh, the ISP service provider is a uh, new central infocom. Okay. Uh, after after I create a VPN connection. And I can set it as our uh, for gateway. Hmm. Okay, you can see my IP address is changed to our office IP mm -hmm. address. The server. The, yeah. yeah. And the ISP provider is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, let me use the Viper VPN because now you know uh, the FIBA World Cup is in Russia and maybe they have some spatial uh, <coughs> TV broadcast to there. So I want to connect to Russia. Mm -hmm. So we set the default gateway into Viper VPN. Yeah. And it's connected. It's still resolving. Yeah. So we have to wait. Or let me reconnect it. Okay. So for the users, if you want to try to use the Viper VPN, uh, you take a closer look to the demonstration because uh, maybe just like what Sam has done. Uh, maybe one step lost and you won't be able to connect to it and somehow we all have this situation so uh, the more you look deeper and you will make it successful faster mm -hmm. okay. 
let's check on the IP again. Yeah, it's yeah. now in Moscow. Yeah. Mm. So uh, when you are using the VP, Viper VPN or you are using the VPN function, it will bring you to uh, another place and you will look like, like located right there. Yeah. And you can use the internet service from that location. And uh, to use the uh, AC2600, it will help you to uh, have a dual bandwidth of the internet connection. And uh, you don't have to connect your remote devices to your NAS through the router. So your router can now do more things for its original job or it, it can take the loading for other jobs. And that will be the demo for the uh, usage. And let's go back to the slides. Yeah, so uh, today we are very happy that we introduced the new things for the QTS 435 version and we have introduced the virtual switcher network. And then the second thing is our QVPN. So both of this will be launched with the new version of the QTS, which will be like uh, the end of July or the, maybe the beginning of August. So uh, it's pretty soon. So uh, let's go back to live. If you have seen the notification for the version update, and please don't be hesitant to click on the upgrade and you will uh, be able to see a new world of our new QTS. So thank you again, Sam, for uh, providing us uh, such a detailed demonstration and for all the introduction for the new functions and the new UI and new features. So if you like our video, please don't forget to subscribe our channel. We will bring you more and more videos for the new QTS 435. And today will be the network virtual switch and VPN part. And for the next topic might be the snapshot or the new uh, topic for like QT or something. So we will see you next time on Q, QNet Live Broadcast. See you. Bye.